Hey everybody and welcome back to the Greg Tech tutorial series and uh, today I'm going to be doing part two of the series. Exciting. Uh, I had a bit of a problem with the series earlier but I've got the first episode up and uh, we're all good to go so let's get started on part two. Um, so basically in, in part one last time we covered the steam machines the the tier one basically the first thing you'll get in greg tech we covered the basic steam machines the boiler uh the bronze blast furnace and you know ways to get your first steel and you can see we've got iron and coal in here smelting up here's some steel that was already processed you see you'll get dark ashes out of it we'll use those later don't worry about it and over here we have Sort of a, a early game setup that I would recommend for all of the uh, all of the mid tier machines. So let's get started with the Steel Age or the Electronic Age. So this is when you're going to get your first electronic machines. Basically, get started in in what used to be the beginning of IC2 and is now the mid tier. So first thing you're going to want to get yourself is a generator. Generator is an RE battery which is crafted. Uh, like so, four tin item casings, two redstone, and an insulated tin ca cable. Now, in early game, this is actually more efficient in late game because you can get item casings, you see, at one per plate, but in a metal form, you get two per plate. So that's more efficient in late game, but not as efficient in early game. It's just as efficient as the other method, and it wastes durability on your hammer or uses steam in your steam four chamber, whichever one you went with. So, build it with just the plate recipe. Four tin plates, two redstone, insulated tin cable. Insulated tin cable is made with a uh, piece of rubber, a rubber bar from Mine Factory Reloaded or Greg Tech, or an error, please check your GTO, log for GT error 01, that must be a bug. Uh, or just the regular rubber, like, ball from uh, IC2. So, then uh, you'll need a tin cable. Tin cables are made by, with a cutter, which is another tool, so it's not used up, and a tin plate makes three. Uh, cutters are made with three iron plates and two iron ingots. And so once you've got your RE battery done, um, then you also want a furnace, which is not that hard, and a steel machine hull. Now, this is a Tier 2 machine hull. Remember in the uh, first part of the tutorial, I was talking about Tier 1 machine hulls? Well, this is what I was talking about. This is a Tier 2 machine hull. Um... So you're going to need 8 steel plates, that's 16 steel ingots, don't worry about it, we'll be able, we'll be able to get a more efficient way to get those, and a wrench. And that makes you one of those. So build yourself a generator, put it in the world. Then once you got your generator, you're going to want a plate bending machine, because this is the ultimate, uh, for, like, the, uh, the first machine you should get is a plate bending machine, because this will allow you to make plates at a 1 1 ratio with ingots. So it'll make 1 ingot equals 1 plate, instead of 2 ingots equals 1 plate. So it'll give you a massive savings on steel. So you're going to want, in order to make a plate bending machine, a bit more complicated, you're going to need an automatic compressor, or, or compressor, two of those, and those are made uh, just the way you would normalize C2 with six stone and a circuit and a uh, tier two machine hull. Now, uh, circuits are a little bit different. You're going to need two red alloy plates, an iron plate, and six copper cable. Iron plate, you already know how to make that. And red alloy plates are made just like any other plate with two ingots and a hammer. Red alloy ingots are kind of made close to the way you'd make them in red power, or at least you used to make them in red power. Uh, you, you need to make them with, uh, you need know, to make red alloy dust with small piles of red alloy dust. And small piles are made with four redstone and one copper dust equals three small piles of red alloy dust. So three batches of this uh, will make nine, four batches will make twelve. So that'll be three ingots worth. So you're going to need about um, eight batches or so to make your first couple circuits. Um, and then beyond that point, you need to get two plates. That's four ingots. So it's a bit of materials, but don't worry about it. Get yourself a... You're going to need one, two, three, four, six circuits in total. So get all the circuits you need. Build yourself two automatic compressors. And then uh, you need also two of the circuits, four pistons, and you also need a conveyor module. Conveyor modules are the three iron plates, two electronic circuits, and an RE battery, and it's three glass. So that's six circuits in total. Build that. Put it down. Generator works just the same as it does in vanilla IC2. Just take yourself some coal. Maybe the coal you had in your uh, steam 
uh, your steam boiler earlier. Pop the coal in here. Let this fill up. This has a buffer of 2,000 EU, and the generator has 4,000, so once it's filled it up, then you can go ahead and take the coal out of the generator. Just let it burn through that coal. There we go. Uh, and then I get ready to bend some plates. So once you've made the circuits required for the plate bending machine, uh, then this will make your circuit building a lot more efficient because it'll allow you to use half the iron, half the red alloy uh, ingots, and half the copper. Because remember, in order to make copper cables, you need to use a cutter on copper plates. So these are now half as expensive. So this will make your uh, copper and other plate production a lot more efficient. So once you've got that, then you should upgrade this generator to a geothermal generator. Remember I told you earlier in the... Uh, you know, early in the first part of the first video, if you watch that, which I recommend you should, then you'll get what I'm talking about here. Uh, you should pro I recommended that you should probably set up an early game nether lava harvester just to, you know, get lava for your thermal expansion or doubling. Well, that's going to come in handy right now because you're going to want to make a couple of geothermal generators. Geothermal generators are made just the way they used to be with... Oops, that's Illuminator. Two empty cells, four glass, and two iron item casings in a generator. Iron item casings are... Can they be made in a plate? That's a plate cutting machine. No, they can't. Um, for right now, you're going to have to make them with a hammer and a plate. So that makes one. So you're going to need two iron ingots if you're using a plate bender, which you should. Uh, and then you also need four glass and your generator, so you have to pick up your generator. So make everything first and then wrench your generator and use it in the crafting recipe. Two empty cells. These aren't as easy as they used to be to make. Uh, now they're made in... What's that? No. Uh, in a plate bending machine. Two tin plates equals one cell. That's four tin and two iron plus uh, four glass. So not that expensive. So you're going to need to make at least one of these, maybe two or three. I would recommend starting off with two and then expanding later once we got uh, more facilities up, just to avoid wasting resources. Your end game setup should look... In fact, I don't want these here. Something like this. Your, your sort of mid-game setup should look something like this. About four geothermal generators feeding into a CESU. You can look the crafting recipe up for that. It's like this. And these are like this. You can pause the video and look at that if it was too fast for you. LV transformer pretty easy, it's just vanilla IC2, plate vending machine, like we just made, assembling machine, this is going to be critical, because this allows you to assemble circuits with much greater ease, this crafting recipe, horribly inefficient, you can make it an assembling machine with a basic circuit board and three copper cable, so right there it already cuts down uh, by half on your copper cable consumption, basic circuit boards are made with two red alloy plates and an aluminum or iron plate, or they can be made more efficiently with an aluminum or iron plate and two electrum plates. Electrum is just uh, basically one gold and one silver in an induction smelter from uh, from thermal expansion. And uh, that's about it. And so then th those can be made in the uh, assembling machine. And the assembling machine is one piston, uh, three steel plates, four circuits, and a conveyor module, and you already know how to make a conveyor module. So make yourself one of these, maybe even two, because they're kind of slow, and you might want to make more than one batch at a time. You might have, like, one assembling the basic circuit boards, and the other one assembling the actual circuits. Um, metal former from IC2. Basic machine casing, electronic circuit, two toolboxes, and three coils. Toolboxes are uh, five bronze item casings, and a chest. Coils are eight uninsulated copper cable, and an iron ingot. So you're going to want one of those, because this allows you to produce uh, item casings, wires, and plates, uh, much like the uh, plate bending machine, except the plate bending machine can process all of the plates, whereas the metal former can only process the ones from IC2. Like, uh, they can only produce bronze, tin, iron, gold, lead, and copper plates. But it can't, and the respective item casings, but it can't produce stuff like steel plates. So, uh, you have to use a plate bending machine for that. But it can be switched from rolling, cutting, and extruding modes. So, 
you can this is your early game solution for making uh, more wire from your ingots this will make three copper wire per ingot instead of two and also it will stop using durability on your hammers or your uh, uh, cutters so better also uh, this is not really critical but it's nice to have the automatic wire mill as a matter of fact it will be critical later but not for really for making wires automatic wire mill is four brass plates a diamond or an industrial diamond, two electronic circuits, a, a tier two machine hull, and a conveyor module. Basically, the automatic wire mill is just something that'll produce wires as effectively as the uh, metal former. But it, in, as, in addition to producing wires, it'll also produce soldering tin or soldering lead for soldering stuff. Uh, it'll produce gold and iron cables and tin cables more effectively than the metal former. And it'll also produce heating coils. You'll need heating coils. It'll also produce carbon fiber. I don't know why that requires... Oh, that's carbon dust, not uh, coal dust. There. It can also produce... It's an automated way pr to produce carbon fiber, which is used in the construction of carbon plates. So, you're going to need the automatic wire mill for this next thing I'm going to build, the alloy smelter. Alloy smelter, it's going to be really useful. Because, basically, it's like the... Uh, induction smelter from thermal expansion but it can smelt a lot more stuff so in addition to be able to smelting the basic alloys like invar and electrum and stuff like that it can also produce uh let's see it can also produce advanced stuff like nichrome cooper nickel stuff like that at a much greater efficiency than just crafting in a crafting table um so what you're going to need to build it is four invar plates you can probably work out how to build those you know what invar is two electronic circuits, an automatic E-furnace, which is just a electronic circuit, two redstone, and a high-pressure steam furnace. If you don't remember from the first video, a high-pressure steam furnace is four steel plates, a wrench, a furnace, a tier two or tier one machine hole, sorry, uh, and two bricks, blocks. And then you also need a cooper nickel heating coil. The cooper nickel heating coil is made in a wire mill with three cooper nickel ingots, so that's why you'll need the wire mill. Cooper nickel ingots are made from cooper nickel dust. Wrong cooper nickel dust. Which is made from small piles of cooper nickel dust. Which is made from one pulverized copper and one nickel dust or pulverized ferrous metal or copper dust or whatever. Basically the ground up copper and ground up nickel. That makes six small piles. So two batches will make three ingots. So you'll need to two nickel dust, and two copper dust. And that'll make you enough ingots to make it one heating coil. And once you built that, it looks like the GUI looks like this. All you need to do is you put the ingots you want to be alloyed in here. It can also melt down stuff into its components. So you can see here, it will, like if you, if you have iridium reinforced stone that you've built, it'll melt it back down into iridium. It'll melt down, why is it a block of chrome into an iridium ingot? That's a little weird. Okay, I'm not going to question that. Um, another exciting thing you can do with it, uh, you can melt down stuff like minecarts, but that can be done in a regular furnace. But, uh, it can also melt down stuff like ancient gold coins, which are found in ancient ruins, so you can get gold out of that. Chocolate coins, which you can make. Uh, credits, which you can also make, and I think you can find, too. You can also melt down stuff that you can't melt down in a regular furnace, like fuel cans, fuel rods, tin cans, you know, just all sorts of stuff. It's got 1,818 pages of things you can melt down in it. You can also melt down your old bronze stuff. That's kind of handy. You can melt down your old bronze steam stuff uh, and boilers and stuff like that into it, bronze ingots, which then can be used in newer projects. So it's a cool way of recycling your old stuff. Of course, you don't get back any of the other stuff that was used in the crafting recipe, but you do get back the bronze. So, it's a handy way of doing that. So, there's your basic machines. And I'd read the reason I recommend this is the geothermal generators, obviously, to make power. 20 EU a tick each, so that's 80 EU a tick. Uh, copper cable, which can transfer 128 EU a tick. And yes, it is 128. That was added in the most recent update. Um, CESU, which can... Uh, store 300,000 EU, just as a small buffer. 
outputs 128 EU a tick, so make sure you down transform it using an LV transformer and set it to the fixed step down when you right click on it. That way, if you accidentally apply a resonance signal to it, it won't step up the voltage. Um, and make sure that you have like separate walls or separate areas for all your different machine voltages, and because uh, otherwise they'll get overloaded uh, by the higher voltages if you accidentally connect a higher voltage machine up to it. So uh, that's about it. That's that's the middle tier of Greg Tech machines. So uh, I uh, hope you enjoy the video. And, yeah, next video will be about this sort of stuff, multi-block tier 2 electric machines. So be excited, because this is where we start to get into the interesting stuff. So this is a, kind of a teaser for the next video. I know, I'm cruel. So, I will see you next time.